I was in a loss. I made zero. I didn't make a penny. I was like, right, what's going on here, man? I just wasn't getting enough kind of leads to kind of make the money. It was a bit frustrating at certain points. I've gone home, I've done yeah. case, look in my DMs, Brendan Lotney, you know, I need to do two sessions a week with you. Right, shit, so <laughs> going very fast right now. All right, yeah, come, let's do it now. I never had doubt. I, I knew from the get-go. I knew, bro, when I made this logo, yeah. I knew, bro, no one will outwork me. This is what people don't realize. Even when I'm in the steam room, if I'm in there with one more guy, I don't care if I pass out. It's scary sometimes how competitive I can get. Welcome to another episode of the Tire Camel Podcast, the number one platform for sharing stories worth telling. So that's your kind of jam. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Right, today guys, we've got a special guest. He launched his business in 2021, and within just six months, the business took off, attracting celebrity clients, the likes of Kane Musa, PFL fighter champion, Brendan Lottney. He is the face of the recovery game in Manchester. He is none other than Bilal, the founder of Shifa Rehabilitation. Welcome to the podcast, brother. Thank you, bro. Nice one, man. What an intro, that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, bro, Appreciate it's going to be an interesting story, man, because we want to find out how you broke out of the local bubble, man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of people in this space, um, and no one has really managed to take it. The way you have, bro. Yeah, so, I mean, bro. Alhamdulillah, like, I think first, most importantly, I'll praise to Allah. Um, without Allah, nothing's possible. And um, I think what, what is with me, bro, is a lot of people, they have a good skill set, but they don't know how to put it out there. If I go outside and speak to three guys, I guarantee two of them will say, yeah, man, I could do with a sports massage or I could do with a, a physio treatment or I could do with X, Y, whatever kind of recovery uh, type of uh, method they want. But it's kind of getting you in front of them. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing for me. So the approach I took, and this is when I initially started, when I was driving around, yeah. so for example, I'm at a bunch of traffic lights, I just look around. So imagine some, some Asian lads just looking at you in the car. You're probably thinking he's starting. But I'm looking at him thinking, oh, he's a taxi driver. What problems will he have? He probably has back pain, might have shoulder pain, might have a bit of tight neck. Right. How do I get in front of him? How do I showcase my, how do I put Shifa rehabilitation and what I do? How do I get that out in front of him? Then I thought, okay, if he's a taxi driver, one of the best ones is word of mouth. Because if I get in with one taxi driver, he's going to go to tell all his mates, oh, this, this guy came over. He did the physio treatment on me, my neck feel much better, uh, or my back feel much better. And they're like, right, then that's gonna then ricochet. It's gonna have another effect on other people. So that was one tactic when I look around and observe and I think, right, how do I get in front of these certain people? The next thing was the, the athletes. Let's give people the context in case yeah, they don't yeah. even know what you do. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So of first of all, what is Shifa Rehabilitation and what does the work involve? Yeah, of course. So Shifa Rehabilitation, it's uh, exclusive kind of mobile service uh, where, where we provide elite musculoskeletal uh, support to, to clients um, to help them with their kind of, you know, muscle injuries. It can be sporting injuries. It can be just a general health, trying to get people in a better physical condition to help them kind of reach their potential. Been in this game for nine years. Uh, started off with a sport and exercise science diploma, uh, which I did for two years. Uh, thereafter, I did a degree in university, uh, University of Salford in sport rehabilitation, which then led to me being a fully qualified uh, sports uh, rehabilitation therapist. This then followed with countless training courses, hours of development and learning over the course of nine years, experiencing clinical hours, uh, which then led to me obviously uh, becoming a, a fully qualified and established uh, rehabilitation therapist. But it doesn't stop there because we learn every single day and uh, we study every single day and we are always looking at ways to bring the best results to our clients every single day. So it's not you, you can get to a certain level and get to the degree, but the journey doesn't stop there. There's a long way to go after that. So and what what do people typically come to you for? Like what type of injuries or what what sort of results are they looking for when they come to you? The most common ones are bro, I've got mad lower back pain. I've got bare tightness in my, my back. I've got a shoulder injury. Uh, I've strained my neck in the gym. Oh bro, I, I, I went over my ankle. Uh, my ankles, you know, it keeps giving over. It's, it's balloon. So anything that's on the context of a sporting injury or just a, a injury that relates to it's affecting the way you physically function. And obviously then the other thing that people come to me for is obviously the, the performance side of things. Yeah. So people want me yeah. to come and help them with their performance. Their performance, their peak performance, their optimal. Peak perf optimal performance, yeah. Optimal performance. Yeah, so they yeah. have the optimal performance and they feel at their best physically. Yeah. Let alone mentally. That's another side right, of it. Right, right. But physically. And I feel if you feel 
at your best physically, mentally you're going to perform. 100%. And that a, a clear example was that was Brendan Lottnein uh, when he fought in the PFL semi-final uh, right. against a lad called uh, Chris Wade, American. And it was in London, this one. So, right, right, so right. I think when I say one of the best, there's two experiences that I've had with these, you know, the top MMA guys in Manchester, Kane and Brendan. One was against uh, when Kane fought in, uh, I think it was Ireland on his, on his Bellator fight. And then the other one was um, with... Brendan when he fought on the PFL semi-final when I tell you these guys were on a different level mm. of their mind I could just look at them and like, yeah you're, you're ready bro like, like you yeah. got, I know you're gonna win I have no doubts about it because physically they were at their best mentally they were just just talking in the most confident way I'm just it's just a belief in it is like you have to be mentally and that's why I say if you physically feel like your best mentally you're gonna feel even better. Your performance is gonna be off the roof, and that's what happened with these guys. And you know what? I was just, I never, I always say I'm just very happy that I was, I was able to play a small part in their journey because, like I say, the physio side of thing for them, they say, "Yo, bro, I couldn't do this camp without you." For me, like I look at everything else they do and the and what they manage. Yeah. And I'm only a small part, and I just want to do my best for them. So they obviously go and you know perform, and it's it just a ricochet effect for Brendan. He went and then won the that that PFL uh, league that they won, so he became featherweight champion that year. Amazing, it, it's, bro! It's, it's like, amazing feeling for me. It's, it's so good that you're in the mix with these guys, and we're going to tap into how you networked and positioned yourself to be yeah. in that space, right? But just to summarize what you said, right? Um, you're not a physio, mm -hmm. right? You'll get in trouble if you say that. Yeah, that's man. so interesting. Get a lawsuit on me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. mad, you know. And not only do you help in people, um, you know, recovering from an injury. Yep. You also help them prevent prevent the injury so they can perform at optimal levels. I didn't know that, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's mad. That I, I always say, <sighs> injury prevention. Yeah, it, a lot of people think like you. You can never prevent an injury from happening. Yeah. Because it just. Yeah, yeah, of course. Anything can happen and an injury could happen. But what you can do is you can minimize the, the risks of it happening by making sure that the person is optimally performing. You know, I can give you the session. You might be with me for an hour, uh, but you then got to put in the work after that in order to make that one hour result be a longer lasting result. Mm. And that's the in key. In order for it to be effective. It's key, bro. It's yeah. the biggest thing. Because this is like, this is what not... I am very honest, bro. I was t I'll tell you how it is. Yeah. Hands-on treatment, being mo sports massage, um, stretching, etc., is temporary. Right. Yeah? It, it's not going to be there forever. The main thing, the long-term thing, is your exercise and your load management. That's gonna. That's your rehab, bro. Yeah. So just uh, for those who don't know, including myself, what it was load management. What do you mean? So load management is. So for example, you come to me yeah. and you start on a. You know, I have for example, you come with me with a, a ankle. You strain your ankle, you strain the ligament in your ankle. Initially, the ankle's all bruised up or swollen up. Uh, you don't have much movement in it. Stage one, what am I going to try and do is try and maintain and improve the range of movement in your joint. That's right. stage one. Okay. And then load management would be slowly progressing the load. So once I feel that that slowly that swelling is going down, the pain is going down, the bruising is starting to subside, I tell progress you to stage two. So stage two would be now, right, okay, we're going to start focusing a bit more on weight bearing. Mm. so we start to challenge sense. and it might not be full weight bearing straight away it might be partial weight bearing so we're slowly going to start increasing it and then when I feel you're ready we're going to progress and add more load add more load to the tissues the tendons the ligaments etc and then we're going to do full weight bearing once you're confident with that we move on to stage 3 stage 4, 5, 6 and ultimately what we want to get you back to yeah. is performing the activity that caused you the injury in the first place right 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 because that's the, the mental block people have Yeah, you know what I mean people then think oh no I'm not going to play football again because that's the last time I went back to... That's the that's the time when I actually sprayed my ankle. Yeah. So now, now, bro, I don't want that that kind of barrier there. I want you to go back to playing football confidently. Yeah. Obviously, you start, you're going to have to work a bit harder because you do have an injury, but I want that's what I want. That's what yeah. the goal is. Not just, oh, just get you back to walking because that's me doing half my job then, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm really... I'm, so you do actually play in the mental side of it then? Yeah, of course. Yeah, 100%. interesting. I didn't know that. 100%. And I feel the mental is the biggest thing, bro. Yeah. Mental yeah. is the biggest thing, bro. I feel I've worked in this field for a long time, bro. And mentally, if you, a lot of people, they have a lot of mental barriers. Yeah. In clinical terms, we call them yellow flags. Uh, so, and it's something called fear avoidance. So they right. avoid doing the things that cause them the injury or may cause them the injury. And 
it's just because they don't want to get injured again. Yeah, it makes sense. It, it, from a normal person, yeah, who would want to get injured again? I'm going to be in pain. I might be out of work. I might lose pay. For an athlete, that could be your golden ticket, you know, to maybe the best performance and that could, you know, bring eyes to you. And if you get injured, you can't do that. So you got to then obviously have a, a good relationship with that person to make them understand, listen, bro, what I'm giving you to do, we're going to do it in the right way. You got to assess the risks of certain things. Yeah. You can come to me and say, do you think I should do this? Do you think I should not do this? But I'm never going to say to you, like, listen, bro, don't do this, don't do that. I'm going to say, maybe do this, but maybe adapt it in a certain way. You know, uh, still try it, but ultimately, I want to get you back to doing the things that caused, that maybe caused the injury in the first place. Obviously, within uh, reason, of course, I don't want you to, like, <laughs> go and get injured again. <laughs> but I need to make sure before I get you to that, you are able to take that. So that's why we use that, you know, loading yeah, kind there's of a process to, involved to get yeah, you back to that. Progressive overload, yeah. bro. Yeah. yeah, 100% mental is so important, man, because you can have a UFC fighter, yeah? uh, he can be the most talented fighter in the world, yeah. right? However, if he deep down in his heart doesn't believe, yeah. do you know what I mean, yeah. that he can achieve certain things, he ain't going to achieve, man. That's you know in every mean? walk of life, bro. Yeah. It's in every walk of life, bro. Like, I put myself into perspective. Yeah. Like, my story, like, you know, everyone says in this, you know, in the, the modern terms, manifestation. Yeah, yeah the law of attraction. The law of attraction. Yeah. Bro, for me, uh, bro, I'm a Muslim, bro. Yeah. But I only ask Allah, yeah, what is best for me. I don't ask, oh, Allah, I want to be a millionaire. Oh, Allah, I want to have, please bless me with wealth. Or please, I say, Allah, I, I ask you what's, I only ask you what's good for me and my, for my family. That's it. Whatever comes my way, I think now nah, that's Allah's way of saying this is what's best for me. So some days, bro, I might lose work, for example. I might have two cancellations in one day. Mm. This is the beauty of business, bro. This yeah. is the beauty. This is why it's Sunnah, bro. You know, yeah, it's a yeah. beauty. Because some days are great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you smash Ups it. And, downs, and then some days you're like, ah, yeah. oh, I had two cancellations. But khair, alhamdulillah. Yeah. At the end of the day, whatever your risk is, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to get that. And uh, this is why I say my aqidah and my faith in Allah is from the get go, bro. From when I first, before I even start, I'm talking before when I, uh, probably when I was even studying, I'm talking back in high school, bro. In my head, I already knew I'm I, in, not with arrogance, but with, I, I knew I'm going to do big things. Yeah. I knew it. I don't know where it was. I don't know. People think I've got a screw loose. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? I would say things to my dad and he'd be like, yo, chill out a bit. Yeah. Really? Like, nah, dad. <laughs> nah, I go, you don't understand. Like, yeah. And then cut, cut it short, a couple of years later, what's happening? I'm doing the things. I never said it to people though. Because I just thought, no, keep it within yourself. You just work towards it. And then when it happened, I then tell people, yeah, I, I thought about this two years ago. And then, alhamdulillah, with my, just my consistency, my, my work ethic, I got to that level. Yeah, we're going to tap into your mindset as well, how you yeah. manage your time. A lot of things we're going to get into, bro. Of and course, you know, bro. Yeah. you know, all, uh, the manifestation as yeah, well, seeing yeah. it, believing it, achieving yeah, it, and all 100%. that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, but I want to take it a little bit back because, you know, we talked about. You know, uh, there's a lot of physio guys out there. There's a lot of rehabilitation guys out there. There's a lot of guys that do cupping in our communities, yeah, yeah. right? It's been, they've been there for ages, bro. Yeah. But like we said before, is no one has really taken it out of the local bubble, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, working with mainstream clients, the likes of Kane Musa, the UFC fighters we mentioned, even Manchester City players. My question is, bro, how, what do you think separates you from the competition? <laughs> well, separate, I don't like to call competition, bro. I don't like to say competition because for me, it's like I'm on my route and anyone else is doing their thing. May Allah put barakah in your, in, in your journey, bro. I don't call anyone competition. I just focus on myself. And um, But I, I, get, I understand the concept. Uh, what makes me different is that no one will outwork me. Like when I say like no one will outwork me, bro. Like especially in my field, bro. I'm one of them guys who I'm relentless, bro. I like to think to myself, what... Do I want to be? And what will it, what will it, what do I have to do to get there? And if it's to get there, uh, what I have to do is show up and work every day. Bro, you best believe I'm going to be there every single day. So what do you mean exactly by no one will outwork me? It's not like direct towards my, another guy doing the physio. It's just my yeah. mindset is no one will outwork me. Yeah, so yeah. for me, it's kind of like a lot of guys, they have a certain barrier. Where like, okay, I'm just going to do three sessions today. For me, it's like, nah, I'm going to do as many sessions as I can fit in physically and within the time, the 24 hours that I have. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, when I say no one will outwork me, it's like, well, bro, who's going to actually come and do what I can do consistently? Consistently. Consistently. That's key. And because this is what people don't realize is, 
you know, if he's, you have five clients a day, you go there and you give the first person the best of yourself because you're fresh, you know, your hands are fresh, your shoulders are fresh, your, back, your mind's fresh. But by the end, your fifth client, if you don't give them that same as you gave the first person, bro, yeah, your business will not reap. Mm. You will not go far because consistency is key. It's the biggest thing, bro. And uh, consistency, consistency providing the best service consistently aiming to get the best result for that client yeah consistently showing up every single day because bro i've you know because there's an element of a, a big discipline factor is a lot of people they, they lack discipline they don't they, you know yeah, they, yeah. They, they struggle to they might do it for a week or two weeks or a month for two months or six months max and then they can't take it longer than that because yeah. they don't have the discipline in them and this is what i mean is those key ethics the work ethic the discipline that's what no one will outwork me on because okay. My experiences in life have shaped me in a certain way where it's like, bro, even when I'm in the steam room, if I'm in there with one more guy, I don't care if I pass out. <laughs> really? Yeah. So you're, what you're saying, basically, you're very competitive. I'm very competitive. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. It, it's scary sometimes how competitive I can get. Yeah. Because it's like, it's not to say that it's more of a, element I, I want to beat this guy. Yeah. I need, to, I need to outdo myself. Every single day, I need to outdo myself. That reminds I'm me of... I'm competitive to myself more than anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you would say one thing that separates you is really your mindset, really, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's what... I think Yeah. my my, my faith in Allah and my mindset. Because your mindset is, I'm going to dominate this space. 100%. I'm not here to take part. I'm not here, I'm here to, to take... take yeah, I'm yeah. here to take over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that your mindset then? Basically, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to just be the guy yeah. uh, who's just like, oh, yeah, bro, I'm here to... I'm in your face, bro. Right. And you're gonna see me in your face. Yeah, yeah. And I get feedback from people. It's bro, you're you're bloody everywhere below. Yeah. She fires everywhere. We can't get anytime I go on someone reposting it. Yeah. I might have a mutual who's using you. I might go on Instagram on my ads. You, yeah. you pop up there. Yeah. Yeah. I go on my my camera roll. I've got a picture with you. Or this when I'm having a conversation with someone. Yeah. Or someone says, oh, I got a bad back. You spring to mind straight away. Right. So let's let's stay on that. Let's explore that a little bit, yeah, right? Yeah, because yeah. like I said, you know. You know, we're, we're trying to give value to some people out there that are trying to, you know, get out of their local bubble, right? They're still stuck there and there's still that local guy that's dealing with the same people in the community, yeah, yeah. right? How did you generate your first leads? Let's take it back to the start. Create content. Uh, that's the first thing I started doing. Create content. Create content. Show people what I do. Because yeah. no one, you might just see the logo, you might yeah. see the Instagram page, but what is this guy? Like, what is your fire rehabilitation? And then you see the videos. Yeah. Ah, okay. So this is what he does. But the other guy does that as well. Yeah, so yeah. So why should I go to Shifa? So would you, at the start, obviously you're not going to be getting K Musa, for example. No, no, no. Right, so yeah. when you were creating content, yeah. who were they? So it's the first guy, Malachi. That was the first one, the first video. The first actual person I did with my brother-in-law. Right. He's my first guy. Um, Shout out to your brother-in-law, yeah, man. Yeah, he lives in Ireland at the moment. Right, right. Um, with my, uh, my sister. And uh, so he's my first ever guy. And we, we shot it in my bedroom. Bro, when I tell you, I had a little tripod, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a tripod. Yeah, yeah. Put it on my missus' dressing table. Yeah. And then I sat there. With my missus and me sat on a, um, her laptop and edited an iMovie. Yeah. Bro, it was a, yeah, when I look back at it, a terrible video, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just showing people, like, this is yeah. what I do. And then after that, we, you know, when I got when I met Malachi. And was you, were you talking in the video? Were you saying, no, this is what I do? just treatment. Just, just treatment. Yeah. Because people just want to see. People are very intrigued to know what is this. You know, I put in all like proper loud banging tunes on them. So when people are watching them, the, the music was catching them. Yeah. And then on top of that, it was the, the what this guy is doing. It just kind of, I, I was very flowy with things. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was one. Then the second video I shot with um, Malachi, it was um, it's called a song called New Level. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I'm on a new level. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, when, yeah, when yeah. that was yeah, a, yeah, yeah. that was a statement <laughs> to people. Right. Like, I'm on a new level, bro. Right, right. Like, I'm gonna come in and dominate this space. Malachi, obviously, we just bonded, bro. And Malachi, it? just remind me who he is. Malachi Edwards, he's a, what, he's a pro fighter. Yeah. He's a, one of my sponsored uh, guys, someone who I sponsor uh, on right. their journey. Malachi has got a, a big fight coming up. He's a second pro fight, uh, fighting on uh, APFC, which is Anthony Pettis. Uh, he's a previous uh, UFC fighter. He started up a, a, a fight show, <laughs> and uh, Malachi's going to be performing on that. Um, and that's going to be in Manchester on October 20th, if I believe. Okay. Yeah, so um, Malachi is one of my boys. Like I can generally say he's my, one of my guys. Yeah. Um, so you've got someone that's relatively known in this space as well. Yeah, he was known. That's him. social proof, right? That's social proof. Social and Malachi's... Proof. <laughs> Malachi, you're an OT legend. <laughs> Everyone knows Malachi Edwards because you know what? He's, he's a very, very 
very respectful, hard working, and a very honest lad. Yeah. And he shows up and works every day. And that's the one thing that I liked about Malachi. And then Malachi then uh, put me on to Ibrahim al Faki, also very known in the Libyan community, in the Arab community in Manchester, mm -hmm. because he's the one of the first guys who went out to UAE Warriors, which yeah. is a big fight promotion. So he's fought on that. And uh, inshallah, next week he's making his uh, Bellator debut. But the will of Allah, he'll get the victory. Yeah, no, that's so interesting because I was asking my last guest who was on here, right? Like, because really business is all about being in the people's game. Right, you need to build relationships, you need to network, and you know it, it, you, you make connections. As you mentioned there, you know one referral leads to another referral, yeah. and stuff like that. And I asked him a similar question, like, what do you think separates you from everybody else, or why do you think people want to deal with you over someone else? And he said something interesting. He said, people can sense what's in your heart. Yes, facts. And I found that so fascinating. It's he goes, facts, yeah. what do you think in your heart? Yeah, outside you can give a different perception, do all these communication techniques and stuff like that. But what you ultimately feel in your mind and in, in your heart will show itself and 100%. people will sense that. 110%. And that's basically what you're saying. People sense that you're a genuine guy. You genuinely want to help someone. Obviously couple that with the knowledge that you, and experience that you have over the years. Yeah. It talks for itself. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that it. accurate? That's basically it, bro. With business, one of the main things about business, it has to be profitable. In order for it to be a business and a, a viable business, it has to be profitable. And I put that to a side for a little while. I said, you know what? I just want to provide value to people. I want people to, I want people to feel good. I want people to enjoy their lives. And I want people to, in my say, you know, try to be as injuries free as possible to have less pain. And when I meet people, it's really kind of just if initial kind of 10, 15 minutes bonding with them and kind of understanding, all right, bro, like, you know, so how does it affect you, you know? And then some guys, you know, everyone has different personalities. Uh, some, some people might be like, yo, bro, it affects me. For example, I can't play with my kid. I can't lift my, my child up or it's affecting my business, bro. Yeah. You know, I've, I've because of this, I, and I'm like, right, Bilal, your job is to get this person out of that. Yeah. And that's why the, the thing for me, the main thing is my sincerity. Uh, I say I try to keep my heart, you know, just want to help people, bro. And it just goes back to being a Muslim. Yeah, and it's it's challenging sometimes because being a businessman. Yeah. You know, one of the things, one of the rules of business people is never deny profit. Of course. Even if a tenner, a fiver. Of course. Don't deny profit. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes you're placed in situations where you're being tested. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. Um, I had Khalil Majid on the podcast as well. Oh yeah, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. The boxer. Uh, Bo Bolton. Is it from Bolton? Uh, yes, he's from Bolton. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I've yeah. met Khalil once one or two times. Have you? Yeah, I just had a brief conversation yeah, with him. Yeah, a good guy. He came in with his dad. Um, oh, mashallah. And he's basically saying that he, he was competing as a pro boxer for 10 years. And, you know, he's fighting on small hall shows, small hall shows after another, after another, not getting any gigs, not getting any major gigs, should I say, or no money coming in. If anything, money's going out. Yes, you know what I mean, he's yes. out of pocket. Yeah. And then an opportunity came. Eddie Hearn hit him up. Oh, mashallah. And he goes, I've got a fight for you. It's in Ramadan, yeah, and yeah. it didn't happen once; it happened twice. So two, I think, two promotions or you know, two big names approached him, and he denied him. So that was his big test, yeah, yeah, yeah. as hard as it was, because he worked all his life to get to that point, and now an opportunity comes, he had to say no. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Mm. So similar to what you're saying, you know, we have that accountability in our minds, you yes. know. So there are some things that we put our trust in, of course. you know. Um, and sometimes, as tough as it is to do, we put that, you know, first place, of course. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, this is it, bro. Is you know, everyone gets different tests in different yeah. ways. Yeah. And you know, it, it really comes down to how firm you are, how much trust you have in Allah. At the end of the day, you know, that's the biggest thing. And uh, in, in my business perspective, like you know, a couple of times, for example, yeah, this is something very. I get asked this question, and I get tons of DMs. And clients asking me, do you work with females? No. Why? Haram. I can't touch a female. Straight up. Haram. I don't, and I, I say this with utmost respect. I know if the female is in front of me, I say, listen, uh, with, with all due respect, I don't work with females. Uh, obviously, it's not. It's forbidden for me to touch another female uh, in, my, in my religion. And I'm a married man. And I've got a daughter, so I don't, I don't, I don't entertain it. I'll never entertain it. Uh, but first reason, yeah, I'm never going to displease my Lord for a couple of quid. It's not gonna happen. Bro, I've had big names. I'm not gonna say them. I say big names. People with millions of followers, females who are wanting to work with me. Right, right, right. And I just said no. Uh, and you know, 
Kane, Kane Musa. Yeah. Very early on when I started, he rang me with the opportunity. And if he's Kane listen to this, he'll, he'll know what I'm talking about. And uh, he goes, is this person, she, you know, she got this issue, um, you know, can he go see her? And I said, bro, Kane, I don't work with females, bro. Really, straight up? Straight up. Yeah. And he goes, ah, and, but he understood, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He understood straight away. He Kane goes, just, uh, yeah, he understood, he got, ah, yeah, okay, yeah. bro, no worries, that's fine. Yeah. But that was a test for me because, bro, that could have catapulted my business to a different level. Right. But I don't want that because yeah, it's haram. Yeah. Yeah. Every penny I would have earned from that would have been haram. Yeah. And my business would never succeed. Touch upon Kane Musa. Yeah. Would you say he's your first major client in Manchester? Or was there someone before him? Or who was your ma- who was your first yeah, major yeah, client? Yeah, the danger. Kane, Kane the danger, Musa, man. He's the yeah. guy, from, honestly. I got the utmost respect for him. I, I, I would call him my big brother. Really? That's that's the kind of relationship we formed. Yeah. yeah. How did you guys get connected? Um, so again, when I was starting off, like I said, I was going to different, different gyms. Yeah. And um, I went to a gym called Octagon Fight Academy. It's right. in Stratford. Um, so you went there? I went there. Just to like... Yeah, Malachi was training there. Ibra was training there. Oh, okay. And uh, they were like, oh, but now Saturday... I don't... Like, I was doing anything and anything at yeah. this point. So Saturday morning, um, come, we got a group training session. Yeah. Now, this is key because you're yeah. going out there, putting yourself out there. Yeah, bro. You're, you're networking. And this is what people miss. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, so I've just rocked up in the morning. Yeah. Took my bag up the stairs. Uh, as I'm walking up the stairs, I turn my head. Who's in the ring? Kane. Kane. <laughs> yeah. So Malachi comes to me and he goes, come, let me just introduce you to Kane. I'm like, yeah, cool. So I uh, walk, um, walk up to Kane. Uh, you know, Kane, he, he's a very observant guy. Mm. And uh, the first thing that actually happened, a f- straight in the eye and a handshake. Mm. And he goes, Malachi, yo, bro, this is my boy, Bilal. Uh, he's Shifar Rehab. And Kane goes, ah, yeah, I've seen you around, bro. Mm. And... Um, that must have felt good. Yeah, that felt good. And I'm, I'm like, yes, bro, like, you know, how are you? And I'm here today. If you want to do something, let's do it. And he goes, yeah, let me just finish up my training. I'll take a shower and then... Um, Hold on. You actually suggested the idea of doing something straight there and then? Yeah. Right. And I said, yeah, like, if you're ready, just jump on. I'm, I'm here for a little while. And he goes, yeah, cool, cool, bro. Like, let me just finish my training. I'll go yeah. take a shower. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll come see you. And then that, that's basically, he, you know, he did all that. He finished the training, showered up. And uh, he goes, cool, let's go, bro. And we just got on, bro. It yeah. was just like, because you know the way I talk? Yeah, yeah. It's very similar to the way he talks. Yeah, and yeah. we just bonded vibe yeah. straight away, you know. And then didn't hear from him for a week. Uh, obviously, probably had business, etc., going on. And then uh, he hit me up. He goes, yo, bro, like, my shoulder's this. I don't remember exactly what it was, but bro, I need another session. Come see me. I'm like, yeah, cool. What's the, what's the, um, uh, what's the address of so he told me everywhere to come went there um, went to his uh, his place and did the session and then after that obviously Kane straight away you know what if he likes you yeah yeah he will start putting you out straight away yeah he's he started getting the camera phone out and you know doing the videos and saying yo this is my guy and um, with, with that bro it just phew, from there that must have skyrocketed I got about 30 40 uh, followers after he posted me out the first yeah. time yeah and then uh, through that while I'm doing Kane's session yep. at, his, uh, at his yard, um, he's on FaceTime. And who was the person on FaceTime? Brendan Lotney. Really? So, so Kane's talking to him while I'm treating him. Oh, so Brendan's like, yo, who's that lad? And yeah, uh, yeah. then Kane's like, oh, yo, bro, this is my guy. He's my physio. He comes over. Like, like, you know, just boosting me. Like yeah, Kane's yeah. always supported it like that. And um, then I've gone home after yeah. Kane said, look in my DMs, Brendan Lotney. Bro, I, I, need, I need this lad. Let me know when you come see me. Come on, bro, let's do it. Boom, boom, boom. Within, I think, a day. Turn right. around, I went, seen him. Oh, bro, I'm fighting on PFL uh, in London. I'm here. What, you know, I need to do two sessions a week with you. Okay, bro. I'm like, rah, shit. <laughs> so, going very fast right now. All right, yeah, come, let's do it now, bro. And then, boom, got him on. Doing two sessions a week with Brendan. Obviously, this was business now. This is yeah, proper business yeah, now. Yeah. So, um, and before Brendan got onto me, yeah. Um, Mr. Mohammed Makayev messaged yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I only had for only I done one session with Makayev. Right. Uh, I've chatted to him on a few occasions, and um, so yeah, Makayev was one guy who also came came through Kane Musa. He seen me on Kane Musa's story. Right. Yeah. And then Brendan came onto to the scene. Yeah. So there are already a couple of names, and then I had a couple of other kind of guys come through through. Then when Brendan shouted me out. Right. Yeah. So just one thing. Led to another thing, yeah. one shout out to another shout out. Exactly. So then another guy uh, who used to previously pay for United, uh, yeah. Josh Harrop, he messaged me. 
Yeah. So I'm like, cool. So I went to see Josh. And then he's another guy, you know, he's a, he's a pro footballer. And then from there, it was like, I've got another guys from Manchester who is known locally on, onto the scene, you know, because they do business, etc. And then one of my, another one of my mates um, who are treating regularly called Kane as well. <laughs> he, 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 um, he's mates with uh, Cole Palmer. Right. And then while Kane's having a session where he put it on his story and then Cole's message is, boy, like, bro, who's my man? Like, I've seen him around. Um, and quite, then Cole's messaged me. These are big players, These man. are big names. And I, I didn't, I don't watch football, bro. Yeah, same. I same. don't know nothing about football, to be fair. And yeah. um, it's, uh, do you know why? Because I was, I was crap at football. <laughs> so yeah. I was really good at football. <laughs> I was a typical Asian boy playing cricket all the time. So, uh, <laughs> so um, Cole obviously then hit me up. Then he's like, yeah, bro, come, come do it. I said, yeah, cool, no worries. Yeah. Then I didn't know Cole was a City player. I didn't know he played for England. I right. didn't know this. So right. I've gone on Instagram. I said to my little brother, he's more into footy. I go, who's mine? He goes, bro. I'm like, oh. So obviously it was very organic because yeah, I didn't yeah. see him as anybody else besides anyone who just wants to book in with me. Yeah. Turns out Cole called me over, did a session with him, and I called a top guy, man. He's very how should I say, man? Down to earth. Uh, he's down to earth, but he's he's one of the boys in it. He chats to you it? in a in a proper way. It's not no facade, no fakeness, uh, no and he's very like respectful. You know, yeah. you know what happens with a lot of people when they get to a certain level, they lose that, they become a bit arrogant. But Cole, he, you know, he actually just messaged me, you're good, you're good bro, is everything all right? And vice versa, we check in on each other. And um, he's moved to Chelsea now. So right. um, obviously, whatever he does there, you know, all the best to him. But if I even, I just messaged him the other day, say, bro, if you ever need me, bro, you know where I am. There's no two ways about it. And it's just kind of building that relationship. Yeah, exactly. With everyone that I know, like even Brendan, I messaged him a couple of days ago uh, about something. And he goes, yeah, bro, cool, shout me. Yeah. So it, so it's building that organic relationship where I think where it is with those, especially with Kane and Brendan, I've chatted to them about my plans. Very, I'm talking the first meetings and they just looked at me. Like, you know, and K, uh, I remember Brendan saying to me, he goes, Bilal, with, with your work ethic, your determination, your grind that you're putting through, there's nothing stopping you, lad, and your product yeah. is solid. It's a nice feeling seeing someone from your own end. Yeah, man. They all you live know, five minutes, ten minutes away from you. Do you know me. what I mean? Making big moves you know what I mean and that inspires you and they say you're the average of the f five people you hang around with of man. Course, man and just to recap yeah that's how you basically broke out of the local bubble and you know you know branched out to mainstream clients basically mainstream. so it all started accumulating this is six months in by the way this is June July uh I believe of the following year and uh I'm starting to then make you know see a bit of so bro you know that that month that I seen Kane yeah I mean I was in a loss I made zero, bro. I made absolutely zero, bro. I made no money that that month. Until he came? Uh, yeah, until he came. Yeah. And, you know, I, I made, I didn't make a penny. I'm like, right, what's going on here? Is man? that because you didn't have enough clients or? I had the odd client because, you know, with this yeah. type of work is a lot of guys, you know, say, for example, they're just like, you know, just your standard, you know, lads, you know, from for like Old Trafford, they work and they have a family. They might just do like a, a session a month, innit? Or every yeah. two months. Yeah. So it it's not like it's every week thing. Right. It's more the guys who put a lot of load for the body, the training guys. They're the ones who would then need it every week, fortnightly. And then, yeah, I just wasn't, it wasn't, I just wasn't getting enough kind of leads to kind of make the money. Um, it was a bit frustrating at certain points because I was working a full time job, putting so much effort into it, and it wasn't nothing was really happening. That's it, actually one of the questions I wanted to ask you, bro. Yeah, okay, because course. when you're starting off a business, it's a scary place to be because you, you used to work right, yeah, a nine yeah, to five yeah, job, yeah, 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 and then you made the decision that you know what, I want to stop. And I want to go full time with this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that must have been a scary place because, at one hand, you got security of a consistent wage coming in, yeah. And then you know, then you just then you just like yeah. in the wilderness in some ways, isn't it? Yeah. And you know yeah. the statistics, right? Like one in five businesses fail within the first year. Second year, ninety percent of them are wiped out. Yeah. So, did you have period of doubts that like, is this is this business gonna work? What have I done? Did you have any never period of doubt? doubt? Never had doubt. Really? I never had doubt. I was, I knew from the get go. I knew, bro, when I made this logo. Yeah. I knew, bro. But even in that dark time where you mentioned I've got no leads, no. that whole month I got I've got no wage coming. I still have I a got no wage I coming. Didn't, in. I didn't have no wage from Schiffer, but I still work in full time, so I still had a wage. Oh, okay, so I, a wage. I played right, it right, in a very right. a very right. specific way, bro. So you did a smart thing. Yeah. So yeah. I worked yeah. full time yeah. and did it in the evenings. 
Okay. For a good year and a half, bro, I work in 15, 16 hour days. So now it makes sense by the work ethic. Yeah. So you wasn't so, afraid to put in that work. You're I working not, nine to five. Yeah. Evening, you're doing that. Yeah. Would you and mind? I train in the mornings. So I'd wake yeah. up, I'd wake up at Fajr. Yeah. And I, obviously it went at times, you know, wake up at Fajr. It was yeah. kind of used to wake up at five-ish at the time. Uh, me and my little brother, yeah. uh, we would go gym. Yeah. By the time we finished gym and come home, it'll be Fajr time. I'd yeah. start work at eight, so about seven ish. I would kind of it, around roughly it'd be Fajr time. I pray Fajr, have a breakfast. So I was still training, bro. I still go into the gym. Right. So I, I wake up at half four, five in the morning. Yeah. Go gym, come back, pray Fajr, eat, uh, start my day job from eight till about four thirty, or sometimes it'd be nine till. I just have different shifts. So or it might some, and then I do that. And it's all working from home remote uh, during this time because of COVID. And um, I then obviously used to get a booking in the evening or two bookings in the evening. So after that, I'd 4.30, I'd finish 5 o'clock, about 6 o'clock when people finished their work. I'd go to the house. I'd work till about 9. So I'd do three hours there. Right. So I've, all, I've been up since 5. Yeah. Training. And yeah. then, you know, I would then get home for about 9, 10. Yeah. Pretty sure. Because obviously my, my salah was the I used to work my timing around my salah basically. Obviously Isha was uh, a bit earlier at that point anyway, so I used to be at a client's house for example, then come home, and then when I'd come home I go to sleep. Yeah. And I just do that all the time. Right. right I was right. doing that for. Pff, I only went part time. Yeah. With my 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 job my employment at the beginning of this year, bro. Really. Yeah. So 2021, I went January 2023 is when I went. Okay, I've got enough work here. I can drop my full time job to part time, and then I can do shifa part time. That was January 2023. So you can imagine part-time. how long uh, over a year. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. A good 14 months I was doing that kind of work. So it ties into working hard and consistently working Consistent. hard as well. I work on the weekends. Yeah. Sundays I'd work. Right. Mondays I'd work. Choose the only day I'd take off uh, yeah. would be a Friday. Yeah. And uh, if I had any work on a Saturday, I'd work on a Saturday. I'd work six days a week, bro. Yeah. Uh, five and to that's six what days. most people are not willing to do. Yeah. Especially when it's physical, bro. So as a recovery expert, how did you get your sleeping, bro? Bro, trust me. <laughs> I would sleep. Do you know my lunch break that I used to have? Yeah. I sleep an hour in that. Yeah. So I have an hour. So I'd sleep from about 10 o'clock, about half 10. Yeah. Then I'd wake up about, um, about yes, yeah, so half four, five. Okay. So I'd get a good stretch because I'm very tired. Yeah. And I used to take a couple of supplements here and just to help me kind of knock, knock out, have a better sleep. Uh, so I knock out. I'd so you had an afternoon nap, you're saying? Yeah, then I had an afternoon nap. Yeah. And then in between my clients, uh, so I finished work at half four, then I have my client at six, I'd have an hour nap there. Right, okay. So that was like my my cycle. Jeez. Yeah, I was just I was just like, at some points, my family were like to me, like, you need to chill out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I, but I just like, nah, <laughs> I'm not chilling out. Yeah. I go, I'm nowhere near where I want to be, so how can I chill out? Was you married at the time? Yeah. So you married? Yeah, I'm married. Well, you didn't have your daughter then? Didn't have my daughter, no. My daughter was born in uh, April uh, 2023. Right. Like 17th April 2023, yeah. How was your wife taking it? Because you're working 24-7 you know pretty what? much. My missus, she comes from a business background, her family. So her father right. uh, her father and her brothers obviously were in business all their life. Her father uh, owned a taxi base in Manchester. He just sold it recently. Um, and I think she just seen from there, like my dad's grafted. She gets you. In order for us to have the best life. Yeah. And they've, his dad, uh, her dad's seen a challenging part, you know, where they went through ups and downs. And he tells me all his stories. She already knew my ideas of Shifa because I started planning it. Yeah. And I go, I go, what do you think? Because she's my, my missus is like my, she like, me and her just talk about everything, bro. Yeah. Like she will tell me, this is a good idea. Why don't you try it? Or so it's mainly she just listened to me, bro. And it's key, bro, as a man, it's a very, once you're married, like, you know, yourself, you're married, you need someone to just vent to sometimes and just talk to. And it might not be, you're asking for guys, you just need to let it off your chest. And I used to do that. She, she used to, do, you know, tell me her issues. I'd tell her whatever's going on in her mind. I'd tell her my mind. And um, and then I go to her, look, Zara, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. Yeah. What do you think? And she's like, you know, I'm always going to support you no matter what happens. And um, I go, but Zara, if I do this, it's going to be the biggest thing I've done. So there's going to be a lot of sacrifice coming. She goes, yeah, so we'll do it. We got not a problem. Mm. And bro, at this point, you know, before I was, um, I don't know I was in debt. You know, I was not, I'm going to say I was doing okay, but I, was, I had issues financially. I wasn't, I, I, you know, you know when marriage, you know how it is in Asian marriage, it's the best of bro, the money. It's like, it's always the biggest issue because- Did you have a big wedding? No, because in COVID. Yeah. So, uh, I, I'm the last. I'm the last. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Saved a bit of dough there. But um, just, I think yeah. life has its 
kind of lessons and that was a lesson for me and then uh, it may be the catalyst as to why I op- open ship up because yeah you know when when people get into financial turmoil and i was in a massive one just a little bit bro but uh it kind of makes you think outside the box yeah yeah because yeah. before that all i knew was wage yeah yeah tax and i that's all i knew and then i was like you know what like forget this it was just my missus i say to her like you know i'm gonna work like a madman yeah until i've established this just don't use the word balance to me because it's not gonna happen yeah, I was going to ask you that. Is there such thing as work-life balance when you're trying to be successful and trying to dominate in a space? Nah, bro. There isn't, <laughs> isn't it? There it's isn't, just... bro. Because, you know, the balance will come once you've established it, right? Exactly. So if you're giving something only 60%, 60% because you want to maintain balance, yeah, you're gonna, it's going to take you a lot longer, bro. Or you yeah. might not even get to that because you'll just get burnt out through that little cycle. Yeah. Yeah, just... I go full throttle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I'll take a bit like, you know, I'll just come back from a week away. Yeah. Um, I bro, I went full throttle. I'm talking every day was a 14, 15 hour day. Really? Consistently. And um, it comes with it. You know, you have to really train yourself to be a certain way as well, mentally. Yeah. To really be able to take it because it is tiring. You know, everyone says to you, bro, do you not get tired? I go, come on, bro, of course I get tired. Yeah. But this is what I say, you won't outwork me. Yeah. Because yeah, even yeah, if I'm yeah. tired, I'll still go. Yeah, if someone's if it's eight o'clock at night and someone wants to hit me up for an emergency appointment, best believe I'm there. You know, it will happen. Obviously, you know, but the thing is, since my daughter's come into my life, I was just gonna say, yeah, yeah, since my daughter's come into my life, there were certain times where I was like, you know, saying to my missus, like, I just feel like I'm I'm missing certain things, and that would kind of make me feel a bit like, Rah. but then I thought, why am I doing this? So there were actually maybe some days two or three days stretch where i wouldn't physically see my daughter awake when i wake up she'd be asleep yeah when i come home she'd be asleep yeah yeah and then i used to only talk to her while i'm when i'm driving between clients on facetime yeah and then she would hear my voice and she'd start kicking her legs and start looking at where's dad you know where's, where's baba and then just this week that i've had with her it's been the most beautiful week ever bro well alhamdulillah like yeah and then it made it worthwhile it made me think you know what be like you went through all that those hours yeah, of course, as time goes on, you need to learn to be maybe a little bit, just, I don't know, I think with my daughter, it has brought a bit of a change into the way I think because she is, my, my wife and my daughter, my mum are my priority. Right. They're priorities, you know? That's, that's your business. why, that's yeah, your driver. That's my why, yeah, that's why I do this. But I know my business is my baby and my priority as well. So there's two different things that I've got balance here now. But like I said, balance doesn't yeah, exist. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say. Balance yeah. doesn't exist. So how do I do it? Yeah. So... I kind of made a commitment to us myself. Day of Juma, you're not working. Yeah. Saturdays, if work comes in, my missus won't be happy to listen to this. Saturday, if work comes in, I might take it where, you know, it has to be on a certain basis. But those other days, I'm going to graft it out. And that's what I'm on right now. This is the price of success, right? Yeah. This is yeah. it. And this is our duty as a man, though, isn't it? 100%. I think we lost that in our bro, society you know, nowadays. Yo, do you know many, what I mean? Men know more, bro. I feel like as a father, you know, I do obviously want to be present, present, of course, in my daughter's of life. Course. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I change yeah. the nappies. I yeah. do, when I'm at home, you do I, your bit. I do my bit. Of course, yeah. she's my daughter. Come on, bro. Like she's my daughter. Like it makes it makes no sense not to. Uh, as a man, it's your duty to provide. Yeah. Yeah. It's your duty. That's what you're here for, to protect and provide. You know, that's that's what we do. Yeah. I actually say to a lot of these guys, bro, like, bro, just fix up a bit. Like, stop being so soft, yeah? Those guys are, oh, I need a little bit of time here. I need a bit of this. Oh, I need a bit of a break. I go, listen, bro, you will get your break. Just put in the work, bro. Just put yeah. in the work. And don't get me wrong, like, everyone has their circumstances. You have to understand, of course, you know? Of course. Some people yeah. do have some difficulties and it's about supporting them. But you know, a lot of a lot of lads, bro, they just want to be, they just, they can't get out of the comfort zone. Yeah. They're scared to take risks. Yeah. And they are just too comfy and cozy. But guess what, bro? You're going to be a comfy and cozy all your life. If you really want to do something, you got to step out of that. I feel, like, I feel like me and you are on a similar journey. Yeah. Right. So let me explain. So like, for example, you're a one-man band. I'm a one-man band when it comes to this podcast. Yeah. If people don't know, I do all the editing, the social media, the guest sourcing. Yeah. Everything on my own. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Plus, I've got a nine-to-five job. Mashallah. And I've got a family. Mashallah, right? So I'm managing all that. Um, and you mentioned something interesting where you've conquered Manchester 
So one of my thing was like, okay, get as many guests from Manchester as possible, then expand, 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 and then yeah. hopefully get people that can do the editing, get people that can do this. So in that sense, we're in a sort of a yeah. similar journey, I would say. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't say I've conquered Manchester. I'd say I've got it under lock at the moment, but Same there's thing. a lot more. Same nah, thing, nah, nah. There's a lot more that I want to do in Manchester as well. Yeah. yeah. There's a couple of plans that yeah. I have that will come towards the end of the year. Um, I have a few more things that I do want to bring to the scene. Yeah. Um, I think for one thing that when, when I, I do a lot of reflection, yeah. so kind of just going off the points you're giving me there that, you know, you do the outsourcing, you do, you know, the editing, etc. One thing that I look back at, I'll be like, okay, but like, you know, as a business owner, you only think about full throttle, boom, 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 boom. Mm. Like before, when I first started, I used to make my own videos. I used to shoot my own content. I used to... Put in, get the bookings in myself, convert them, take deposits, do everything myself. I used to do all the social media myself. Uh, used to go do the work myself. Everything was me, right? It's kind of yeah. similar to you. Yeah. But now yeah. I've got someone who does my videos for me. I'm jealous, bro. <laughs> but, bro, it's progress, right? Bro, it's, editing is like 40 hours. Bro, do you know what I said? Just like, editing on its own, the yeah. reels and the main timeline is like 40 hours on itself. Bro, my missus used to, like, she used to knock out. Yeah. Yeah. I used to be under the pillow. Yeah. Phone in my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Putting the thing to, oh, yeah. Like, oh, no, put it. It's that, deep, that's, bro. that's what I used to do. And um, now when I look back at it, now I'm not doing that. Yeah, you know I can't I mean? wait to outsource that's, it, man. Inshallah, it will come soon. Yeah. Um, but now I always have so, uh, a brother who, who comes, does all, I'm not sure if you've seen my recent uh, videos, the, the the Manchester promo that I've done, yeah. the All Eyes On Me. And then I put a recent one out with uh, Ibrahim Fahi, uh, which is um, basically, it's a, it's a treatment montage. Mm. So it's a treatment montage and uh, it's uh, with uh, one of the Meek Mill uh, kind of uh, backgrounds. I'm a boss. Mm. Don't know, you know, you know, mm. everyone knows yeah, that one. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard, yeah. bro. So uh, again, going back to the point, like that's the way I kind of look at it. It's like, well, there's so much that I was doing at the beginning, which I don't do because I've managed to offload it to my guy who makes my videos for me. Now edits just send them to me. I just got to post them. Um, now it's like, you know, that's one of the main key achievers because because me, I, I think my, my uh, business through social media, I promote it through social media, especially yeah. Instagram. So that's what a big load come off me now. And it's good content. It's quality yeah. content. People, bro, like... And these people can do it better than us. Yeah. Let's get yeah, real. professionals. You've got let's to go to the professionals. Got to go to the, and let's get real the goals that we have. Yeah. We can't do it alone. No, 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 no. We can't no. do it alone, can we? It's only so much, bro. But listen, we talked about, you know, how you manage your time and where you get your naps and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering, like, do you use any systems like, you know, like any technology like Google Calendar, for example, something as simple as that to manage your day-to-day um, organization of the day, for example? Yeah, 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 of course. Um, uh, I have a, a app called Calendars. It's basically, yeah. it syncs into my phone and then uh, it's on my, my front screen. Yeah. So every day, oh, uh, nice. my wife will actually do it for me. Check that one out. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, she, she got actually, your first hire there, man. Yeah. But, so <laughs> she, she just basically looks at my 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 kind of bookings. Yeah. Uh, and then she puts it into my calendar. Right. And then she'll obviously put. Uh, obviously, I've told her how I like it done. So she will put it in certain blocks where she will sometimes you know give me a pat lunch and I eat in the time, or just have half an hour to just rest. Yeah. You know, in the car, or I'm just at a cafe. I might go to a costa and just sit down for a bit. So yeah, I do have a certain structure. Mm. that I like to follow. Obviously, you have to adapt to the day. Sometimes I might get stuck in traffic on Mancunian Way. or So you got to adapt to certain situations. Sometimes the session might go over or sometimes something random might just come up. So you got to be adaptable. But I do use like a, a bit of a blueprint for the day. This is how right. my day is going to look. So Alhamdulillah, it's kind of like... So it's organized, mom, it's structured. Yeah, my month's planned ahead. Right. But then I know things will come up. Right. So I have leverage in my diary all the time. Yeah. Plus emergency appointments. Yeah. I have to have leverage to accommodate to them. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you obviously have certain bookings in the month yeah. and they they kind of get booked up at like a good rate, a very good rate at the moment. And then it's like, well, if someone really needs me and obviously with the emergency appointment, obviously you pay a bit more of a premium. Yeah. And then for me as a business, that's makes, it's, it's a very good kind of, up, uh, like, I call it a bit of pocket money, basically. Yeah. But from a business perspective, it obviously helps a lot. So I've got to have leverage in my diary. If one does come in, where do I fit him in? Yeah. So you got uh, you got to be able to work ca- calendar, um, yeah. but the best thing is, is is only me. Yeah. So I have a bit more leeway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I then look at right when I'm going to pray my salah, when I'm going to do this here, when, yeah. and then um, but it is challenging. It yeah. is challenging. Yeah. It I is. Imagine, yeah. Bro. Because sometimes the travel, <sighs> the thing with mobile, 
everyone says, why don't you get a clinic? Because the thing with mobile is... Yeah, I was going to ask you that, actually. Why, yeah. do, why don't you get a clinic? Because for me, look at the times we live in. Everything's to your doorstep. I take away the... Uh, bro, I take away a lot of load from people. I, I, I actually get feedback from my clients. So if those people are booking with me at 8 a.m. 8 8 on, a, on a Sunday, yeah. I go, bro, if I didn't come to you, would you come to me at this time? Hell no, bro. Yeah. So then that, I capitalise on that. Plus, look at the clientele I work with. Look at the clientele I work with. They're not, you know, uh, my boy Cole from City. Well, he's just moved to Chelsea now. But uh, he, he he's, he's like, yo, bro, he's going to come to my yard. We're going to chill. I'm in his comfort zone, so he feels comfortable. Yeah, you're in his environment. Uh, his environment. Yeah. Kane, I'm in his place. Brendan, I was in his place. They were comfortable. I took off load cause, because they're professionals. They have a busy life anyway, so I want to take a bit away from them. Rah, that's deep, bro. Yeah. Do you know why? Because the number one complaint people have when starting a business, yeah. I don't have capital, I don't have money, I need a unit. Like half these guys that are nowhere near your level, yeah, yeah. Um, they've got they've got flipping places. And yeah, like, yeah, I'm sure you've seen a place in the Old Trafford, yeah, yeah, but yeah. they're not, you know, obviously expanded beyond that. That's what I mean. So what's interesting is that you don't really need money. It's how you market yourself, how you position yourself, and you just hit the nail on the head there, man. These yeah. guys prefer you to come to them anyway. Of course. Like Court, I remember once Courtney said it to me. Uh, the, uh, the lad who played for Crew, he goes, uh, he goes, bro, I love the fact that you. All I got to do is press yes on the buzzer. You come in, you set your table up. I do my session. Yeah. Uh, you do your thing. I'm just on my phone. Um, have a good catch up. Yeah. A good chat in the morning, and then you pack your stuff up, clear everything up, throw everything in the bin, and then I don't need to do anything. I yeah. just give you the payment, and then I go and have breakfast that in Disbury. I'm like, yeah, man. And yeah. just that kind of concept, even taking away from the pro athletes and the the, the business people. Yeah. Uh, it'd be asked I'm saying with him. He would yeah. tell me, bro, uh, Bilal, I've got business meeting here this day. Can you come at this time? Yeah, cool, bro. I'm there, bang on that time. Nice. Do your session. Shout so out I, to Ibi Aslan, by the way. Yeah. He was, a, he was a guest on episode one. Top brother, Ibi, man. Honestly, got a lot of love for him. Yeah. Uh, he supports me a lot as well, yeah. teaches me a lot uh, but yeah that that's the way the approach that I took and I thought then I thought look everything's at your doorstep nowadays Yo, yeah. you want food go on Uber Eats yeah, you yeah. want this yeah yeah so it's like you know the Uber Eats are physio <laughs> <laughs> not physio <laughs> sorry um, <laughs> rehab world rehab world <laughs> yeah, sorry yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so it's kind of like um, I'm kind of that's the way the approach I took and I always try to get feedback from people what do you think of it yeah yeah and you know what bro everyone loves it Everyone's like, we love this. Yeah. I can't complain, bro. This is amazing. People were confused. Some guys had inquired to me and I'm asking them, what's your postcode? And they're like, right, what do you mean? I go, I'm going to come to you. And they're like, you what? I'm like, yeah. And I go, they goes, no way, bro. That, it's like, even though mobile is a big thing right now, I don't know how many people that are like, may, like you know, a bit more established who are doing it mobile properly. Yeah. Yeah, so people have clinic and mobile, clinic and mobile. Uh, I think there's pros and cons to it. Of Don't course, get me wrong. Of course. Yeah, the element yeah. of uh, a clinic, you know, yeah. you have a bit of an overhead, the only overhead out of my petrol. But yeah. then I think in the clinic, you might have a bit more of a turnaround. But then long term, how much would that turnaround be? You, t your costs and then turnaround and then, you know, then you got to look at yourself. Yeah. You know, whereas as mobile, it works for me, bro. Yeah, yeah, it works for me as it a works clinician. For you as your personality, your yeah. you like getting out there and about. You don't mind doing exactly. that. Exactly, so and it, it works. It gives me, it gives me. You know, I've worked in clinics before, yeah. so I've done about ten patients back to back. Yeah, yeah. And mentally, wow. it puts a toll on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't enjoy it. Whereas yeah. me, because I'm driving, for example, from Wimslow, then I might go to Alty. I'm looking around. I'm seeing things. I look at new places. Um, I get a bit of fresh air, my hands get a bit of rest of my and then I, I just love it, bro. I think mobile for me suits me as a person. It suits my business and it suits my clients. Sometimes work with the tools that you got. Mm -hmm. So have the minimum startup costs that you, you bro, literally. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like for example, you, all you need is your table, your tools. And these, bro. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what you're mean? out <laughs> strategizing, you're out there doing 10 appointments a day while That's these mans are waiting for clients to come in potentially. Um, and you did out improve as well, which is improve on the service. Do you yes, know what I mean? Make always. sure you're, you know, improving, taking feedback. And you mentioned there, so you can always improve. Yes, hundred percent. It's the biggest key, bro. Wow, I'm impressed, bro. Yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. And it, it's sometimes it's subtle feedback. Yeah. You know, and this is this is a, you know, two things people don't do. Yeah. They don't listen. Yeah. And they don't think. Two things they don't do. <laughs> what a bad combination, man. Trust me, that's, they don't do it. Yeah. And if you sometimes just sit back and think about what I just said, they don't listen yeah. and they don't think. Yeah. Trust me. Sometimes some people have said certain things Yeah. and I've pondered over it. And I thought, why did he say that? Yeah. What? And it might, I'm, it's not overthinking. There's a difference. No, no, no. Yeah. How? Okay, but what he said, 
How could I apply that to my business? Okay. Could I use that in a negative light or a positive light? So it's kind of just breaking things down all the time. Yeah. And this is the thing with issue, uh, the issue with a lot of people is conversation is an art, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people just want to put their points out. Yeah. You know, I could, the, this is the beauty of a podcast. Yeah. Is you will ask me questions and I will answer and I'll ask you questions and then you will answer. Yeah. And it's an art and people don't know that. People can't articulate that. Yeah, people yeah. People think this guy, probably listen, this guy's waffling right now. But bro, think about it. Yeah. Some of the most, yeah, I say successful people in business or in any walk of life, mm. they're very observant. Yeah. They listen to what you say. Sometimes don't talk too much either. You got yeah, to think no, about no, it's good, bro. You're very astute, man. I like yeah. that about you. Yeah. Very astute. You're very observant, as you put it there. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the last piece of the puzzle, which I think you're going to be doing well as well, is outlast. So yeah, you mentioned man. outwork, out improve, out strategize, and outlast everybody yeah. in order to be successful. And that's the only way you can take out the big boys in the game. Longevity, bro. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Longevity. All those four things is is the formula. It doesn't matter who you're competing with, as long as you can do do them very well. You're yeah. gonna smash it in life, bro. And you know what, bro? Just be real with yourself. Yeah. Just be real. Like you've got to know you yourself yeah. better than anybody else knows you. Yeah. And this is a very big thing for me because yeah. I spend a lot of time alone, you know, when I'm traveling. Yeah. And then I spend a lot of time when I go to the gym. Yeah. You know, I spend a lot of time, you know, I spent a lot of time living on my own. So I got to know myself. I knew where areas I need to improve on. I knew what my strengths were. And then for me, like, how do I continuously evolve and become better and become better and become better? And that's the way I kind of, you know, I always say to myself that I need to outdo myself every single session, you know? And it's like, sometimes it's not just the physical work. Yeah. It might just be turning up a bit earlier. Yeah. Or trying to get the rehab plan out faster, having a faster turnaround on it, or just having a bit more of a in-depth conversation with this person, or teaching this person something new today. Mm. You know, there's so many different techniques, and like it, people don't think in it. Yeah. So we're just kind of prodding them, bro. Why don't you try that? Might work for you. Okay. And sometimes when I say be real, in my work is I have to sometimes be very upfront with people, and I tell you, listen, bro. The reason why you have these issues is because of this. And yeah. until you don't do this, you're still going to have your issues. Inshallah. Yeah, but when it comes across, and that's how you get value. Before you ask something, for, let's say you want something in life, the best way to get it is give value to someone and it will get reciprocated in, in ways. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just give value for free. That's a big lesson, by the way. That's a, that's a pro tip, man. Yeah. Just give away. Stop asking. If you want something in life, Stop asking for, stop asking immediately. Just give value to that person instead. Yeah. And you'll see it'll get reciprocated other ways. It might not be directly from that person, but that person might connect you with someone else. This is it. Do you know what I mean? And this, this is another case that happened is um, there was some brothers in Manchester, very well known. Um, and they owed, one of them messaged me. Uh, I think they own one of the Chai Wallers in the, right. fr- one of the franchise in the North Trafford, uh, that family. And uh, one of the brothers messaged me and um, he wanted to get booked in, but I didn't have space. Yeah. Uh, he injured his ankle, I believe. And um, he just messaged me saying, bro, Bilal, this is the issue. Uh, can I, can I, can I come to you? And yeah. I said, bro, I'm, I've got no, I think I wasn't in the country or still something. I can't remember clearly. Yeah. And I go, listen, bro, look, I won't be able to see you. I can recommend these some guys that I trust. Yeah. So if you want to go see these guys, you can go see them. But here's a plan from me. You yeah. told me your symptoms. Here's what I feel you need to do for the next couple of days. Here's I sent him in like an online rehab program. I got his email, sent it him. And he goes, Bro, you didn't have to. Like, Jazakallah, like, thank you so much. But turned out, I didn't know that these guys were so successful. Right. I didn't know that. I just looked at him as another brother. Yeah. And then after I've done that, um, his. Uh, you know, uh, talking about my best, uh, my, my mate Sammy, uh, my first ever client, he told me, yo, my man told me you did that. So, you know, he, he was talking very highly of me because of that. Right. And, and that like, just right. led to doors opening up for you. And so now this whole family knows me now. Yeah. And I didn't do it in the uh, the essence of, oh. Get something want, back. Yeah. I just, yeah. nah, come on, bro. Like, if you need my help, I'm going to help you. Yeah. I'm a Muslim. That's what I do. Do you know what I mean? And that's genuinely as well. Do you know yeah, what I mean? That's what I do. And that's the ultimate. That's how easy networking is. People yeah. talk about how do you network? Give my card. Nah, bro. Just yeah, give value. Just give value. Just talk, give value. Talk, like listen. Listen to people. 
and then again provide them value provide them value yeah man. provide them value well, just drawing the podcast to a close um i just wanted to run through a few tips that people can use and incorporate into their lives in terms of recovery yeah so what would you say are the top like th- three or four things that are, you know people should yeah. do on a daily basis so let's just break it down i'm going to give you a very simple blueprint people come to me thinking a massage is recovery yeah. they think cryotherapy an ice bath yeah. a sauna a steam they think that's recovery right no is it not really no that's not recovery i was gonna get into ice baths as well yeah re- <laughs> recovery is your sleep right wow your training program yeah so how you monitor your loading throughout the week yeah your hydration levels your stress management right and um i think they're the main ones i'd say okay. are your yeah, four yeah and uh everything else is add-on right so i like to call everything that you know is it's like a supplement yeah so you know when you go to gym you take supplements right why yeah. do you take supplements yeah yeah you're meant to get your real uh intake of your your macros from your food right yeah yeah and if you're not hitting those certain things you then go and get supplements like you might get you know protein powder etc to supplement it in to add on to it same way with this recovery element mm. yeah you have your 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 fundamentals okay and then you have you know a, a, someone like a you know, a, a massage to add in to top it up. Right. So, so getting, lo- getting those f- things that you mentioned there, those four or five things in there, are the foundation to prevent injuries happening in the future. Exactly. Yeah. You've got to look at the fundamentals. Right. And I think the most, for me, the most important is sleep. Yeah. Sleep, like yeah. sleep, hydration, and uh, managing your loads yeah. are the three top three for me. Right. Yeah. Stress is uh, another factor, but I'd say the three top three are them three. Mm. And uh, everything else is an add on. What's the optimal level of sleep? I know it depends on genetics, depends on the person, but what, for example, <laughs> how much sleep do you need? Me, I could operate off about seven hours, six to oh, seven decent. hours. Six to seven hours. Yeah. I've actually improved my sleep a lot more. Yeah. And that's me being very on. I never used to sleep as much, but now, bro, I've been away for a week yeah. and I've slept a good eight or nine hours every eight hours every night. And I swear to God, I never felt this fresh in my yeah, life. Yeah, sleep is just, yeah. oh my God. And now, since I've come back, and I, obviously I don't, I, I want to practice what I preach in it. Yeah, yeah. So I do, you know, I do say to people, you've got to sleep X amount, but I make sure I eat it as well. I yeah. make sure I'm drinking, you know, the waters. Make sure yeah. I'm training properly. you got to exercise, man. <laughs> yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? you got to exercise. I don't understand why, you know, unfortunately people come up with too, ex- too many excuses. Yeah. Walking, by the way, just doing your daily walks is not exercise. Is it not? You've got to go out with the intention that I am going to exercise. Yeah. And that could be, you're going to go out for a run. You're going to go for a gym session. You're going to go to spa. You're going to go do, you know, you're going to actually go with the intent to exercise. There's two different things. You know what I mean? So, um, you mentioned optimal level of sleep. What's the optimal level of hydration? Because I've seen a podcast of you. That yeah. You with Ibi, yeah. And the levels of water you suggested seem like mad to me, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I get so many comments on that because every, you know, I had it with a lot of family members and uh, friends. They message me. He goes, after seeing your podcast, I had to like make sure I'm drinking more water. Yeah. And I like, I go, I go. How hard is it to drink water? Yeah. It's pure laziness if you don't, right? <laughs> it isn't it? Like, come on, yeah. <laughs> it's like. And uh, to answer your question, it's basically what I said in Ibis. Yeah. I go, if you're a female, yeah, you need to get between two to three liters. If you're a man, yeah. Uh, you need to be getting at least, I say, three and a half, four. If you're an athlete, yeah, you got to be hitting four and fives. Yeah, yeah. But what? What is that relative to height, though? Of course, I'm just talking generally. Yeah, I'm just talking from a general consensus. So talking how, how tall average, are you? I am um, 180 centimeters, so it's about five, ten, five hundred, ten and a half. How much are you packing? Three, three liters. Yeah, that's a lot of water, bro. Yeah, bro. But your body gets used to it. Yeah, you know understand. Uh, your body gets your body trains and adapts to what you put it through so you know your bladder if you start drinking water at first you're gonna think i need to keep peeing and keep peeing but your your bladder will get stronger right you know your bladder will yeah. get stronger your pelvic muscles will get stronger so you won't actually be you'll be holding on to the water more after a little while of doing it more consistently it's good to pee anyway bro <laughs> you get out of the system you know what i mean <laughs> get them it's, toxins yeah, out man. get everything out of you like uh, and it's um, obviously like i say it doesn't only just affect your you know or your, your peeing to get our toxins you know it's gonna affect so there's a connective tissue in the body called fascia everyone talks about fascia 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 but just talking about water and how so i think the statistic is 80 percent of fascia is made up of water so imagine you're dehydrated yeah what's going to happen to your fascia it's going to be called shrink it's going to shrink exactly same with blood so the the, comp- uh, the composition of blood called plasma and then i think it's 90 percent of if, I'm, if i stand corrected 90 percent of plasma is made up of water 
Right. So if you've not got enough water in your system, yeah. it's going to have an effect on your blood, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like so many different things you've got to think about how it can affect. And uh, so, yeah, it's just really toxins, but it helps you perform optimally. You mm. have more mental clarity. Mm. It's a very big factor. Mm, you definitely. drink enough water, you have a mental clarity. That's key, man. Yeah, you need to drink just it. Just that alone, bro. Bro, that's what I'm saying. But people are more reliant on your, your coffees and this and that. Bro, just yeah. get water in and watch how much how different you will function. Uh, everyone who's watching this, yeah, yeah, for the next, I say, two weeks, 14 days, yeah, if you're a male, just get three litres in. If you're a female, get two litres in every single day consistently and watch what happens. And write in the comments your results as well. Yeah. Watch what happens and watch how easier it gets to so you. So we're talking well. about energy levels increase, mental clarity. Yeah. And leave it in the comments. Yeah. I, I want to see it, bro. I want to see. It. I want to see the results. I'll turn that into a clip as well. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, it's been absolutely amazing having you on the podcast, man. Thank you, bro. Thank you. What's next for Shifa rehabilitation? I've got some things coming. I'm, uh, like I say, I'm always working. Uh, yeah. You got some big news, man. Do you want to drop it yeah, a little bit? Yeah, Give yeah. us a little hint, a little teaser. So. Yeah. We talked about me expanding the business. Yes. And there are certain areas that I want to tap into. Yeah. Um, Dubai is, I say Dubai is like my second home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's time to, it's time to test the market. Time to expand. Time to expand. International. So Shifa tours Dubai. Yes. October 14th fly out, inshallah. I'll be there for a little few days. And uh, anyone who's watching this, who's in Dubai, or anyone who's watching this, who has family, friends in Dubai, I'm going to be taking on bookings for a certain amount of time while I'm there. Hit me up, get you booked in, and you'll get the full experience of Absolutely. Shifa Rehabilitation. 100% man. And uh, like I say, keep watching the journey. Inshallah, a lot of things to come. All with the will of Allah. Um, obviously, I just ask everyone, uh, one piece of advice this is that I give to everybody is any walk of life that you're in, uh, anything that you are trying to achieve in life, and especially if you're a Muslim, please don't forget to, well, please don't forget one thing, and my, that's your salah. And the second thing is make sure you, you read your atkar. It's very important. Mm. Morning and evening. Morning and evening. Read your atkar. Yeah. And you know, the reason why I say that yeah. is we live in a very a dirty world, bro. A very dirty world where unfortunately, you know, the people around you, they may not, you know, everyone's all good to your face, but you don't know who's happy for you. Yeah. And you got to protect yourself, you know, protect yourself. And who is the protector? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Wow that's deep man Yeah so if you You know pray like, And this is what I say to everybody And um, You know when you really Put all your faith in Allah Yeah Like literally Like everything The only thing That's going to happen Is good will come to you So always Put your faith in Allah Always value your body This is uh, an amana uh, And uh, uh, people don't know uh, Who don't understand the word uh, Amana It's a gift it's, it's a gift, it's like a, a possession that's been granted to us to, uh, for, by our Lord for a certain amount of time. And that's from the day we were born to the day we pass away. And when we go back to our Lord, yeah, our Lord's going to ask us, what did you do to look after yourself? You know, what did you do with the amana that I gave you? What did you do with the body? Yeah. And remember, you've got to be accountable for that. So look after your body. That's amazing, man. Look after it. Because it won't just benefit you in this world. You know, you won't perform better. You won't just be, you know to the best of your abilities, it may, you know, may be a catalyst for success in your life, but it'll also be a catalyst for success in your afterlife. 100% man. So look after it, trust me. Please, you know, everyone who's on these vapes, stop them bro. Anyone who's doing these balloons, please stop them. Honestly, you don't understand the harm it's bringing. And half of you guys who are vaping, and if you're not married, there's a lot of research coming out that it could affect you when you have children. So that alone, you know, remember it. So just a bit of advice, I see it day in, day out. You know, uh, I just want to help the brothers, the Akis, um, in, you know, living a better life, a better quality of life. And if there's anything that I can do, even if it's just for advice, just drop me a DM. I'll listen, I'll, you know, I'll do my best to help you. And even if you sort of vent something out, man, feel free. And just keep me in the duas, the uh, main thing. My, myself, my family, just keep us in the duas. And inshallah, I want to take Shifa Rehabilitation worldwide. The reason why, because I want the name Shifa to go all over the world, the name of Allah. Uh, anyone who doesn't know, uh, Shafi is one of the 99 names of Allah. This is the reason why we started this business, so people actually see and understand Shifa and, um, and understand why Shifa is such a powerful word. Powerful in the sense of Shifa means to heal. So, yeah, man, uh, that's the, the main kind of message I had for a lot of people is uh, please look after your body, pray your salah, pray, uh, read your adhkar, uh, be a good person, 
and um, just keep your intentions clean always man and you know if you really believe in Allah only good will come to you if you really believe in you have to work all in Allah's plan only good will come to you 100% man what a beautiful way to end the podcast man yeah man it's been absolutely amazing having you on Bilal JazakAllah khair bro thank you and look forward to meeting you bro I know man I look forward to seeing your upward trajectory in this space man hopefully you smash it with that being said see you in the next one peace